Jellyfish, and welcome to the Becca's Beanie Knit Along. Check that out. Isn't that gorgeous? So, join me as we cast on, knit through Entrelock, and we make this amazing beanie. You can pick up your kit at jennyfishknits.com, and the kit includes the pattern and all the yarn that you'll need to knit along with me. So, are you guys ready? I know I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's get started. First off, I want to go over the yarn choices. We have several different colors. We have rainbow, the forest, watermelon, rusty roof, iris. These are just some of them, but look at that gorgeous, gorgeous color. Oh, my absolute favorite, the one that this hat is done in. It's called purple pansy. So go to the website, jennyfishknits.com, check out the kit. We also have the pattern available separately as a digital download. So you can choose that if you want, if you have your own yarn, but you can get the kit that has the pattern and the yarn and be ready to start with me. The supplies, um, you're gonna need a US size five, which is 3.75 millimeter knitting needle, circular in the round. We'll be knitting in the round and you'll need a 16 inch cord on that. So get your supplies and join me. So let's cast on. I'm using a 3.75 millimeter or US 5 with a 16 inch cord. A very flexible cord comes in handy. To cast on for the brim of the beanie, that's this part right here, we're gonna do a loose cast on. And to accomplish that, I'm gonna put two needles together and then grab my yarn here place a slip knot, slide that onto both needles. Now, if you don't wanna use a slip knot, you can go ahead and do a twist and then get started into the long tail cast on. It's personal preference. I like to have the slip knot there, so I'm gonna go ahead and make that, slide my needles through. I want the tail of my yarn towards my body and the working yarn or the active yarn that is attached to the ball towards the top. Then I go into slingshot mode and I'm gonna go ahead and cast on. In the pattern, it will have the exact number of stitches that you need to cast on. So we're gonna go ahead and cast on all those stitches. Then once I get cast on, I'll show you how we join in the round and start knitting the ribbing. Okay, I've got all my stitches cast on to the to my circular needle see how it's folded in half now i just want to pull one needle out i want to hold one needle and pull one out very carefully there we go now i'm going to spread these needles across the cord to the other side making sure that i do not twist my stitches so this inside piece is going to go all the way across oh, a little fuzz there there we go Make sure that goes all the way across. Now we're gonna, what's called join in the round. So to join in the round, we have this first, there's a couple different methods. One, you can easily just cast on an additional stitch and slide that stitch over to your other needle then to join in the round, you knit those two together and that kind of secures them. However, what I like to do, and let me zoom in here a little bit, show you what I like to do. Take this one off, then I transfer the last stitch that I cast on, and then I pick up the first stitch with the other needle just like that, and I crisscross them. It does give me a little crisscross, but I'm gonna be weaving that in anyway. So it just works for me. <laughs> so that's how I get ready to start my beginning of the round. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and take a stitch marker. That's gonna notate the beginning of the round and we slide that on our needle. Now what we're gonna do is knit two, purl two. Make sure you're not working from your tail. And then we knit two, bring the yarn forward and we purl 
two. And we're gonna do this all the way around. Knit two, purl two. And then once we get to our stitch marker, we just slide that stitch marker and continue on. Make sure we do two. There we go. So it's knit two, purl two. We're going to continue knit two, purl two until we're about one inch, one to two inches. I like to keep it close to one inch. Looky there. So if you do like what I just did is I went to one and one, I need a second purl there. So what I'm going to do is tink, which is knit backwards, put my needle into the stitch, pull that stitch out just like that. Then I can bring back forward and get back into my two by two ribbing. Knit two, purl two. And see how I'm feeding the finished ones to the right, pulling the, the ones that need to be worked up to the other side. And that helps to maintain my tension. I'm not pulling and fighting with my yarn and my stitches. They're just scooching along the needle. Just scooch, scooch. Your first round is usually a little more finicky because you don't have any fabric on your needles yet. You're just starting to create this project. So there's nothing to really hold on to. But once you get past the first couple of rounds, it gets a lot easier. There, I did it again. There's a pearl. I need to pearl to knit to. It's always good to stop and check every once in a while to double check, make sure from your beginning of the round marker that you have two, 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 all the way because you'd hate to get all the way around and find out you missed one. <laughs> so I'll take a double check there. And then just keep going. I'll continue going in around with the knit two, purl two until I have about an inch of fabric on my needles. Okay, on this one here, I've got an inch of knitting or just shy of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my decrease round. I only have to do this one time, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna replace my beginning of the stitch marker. Then I'm going to knit two together, then purl two, and knit two, I'll just continue this all the way around until I get to that stitch marker. So now we have finished the final round of the ribbing and we're ready to start the bottom tier triangles and I'll show you what that looks like on the finished beanie here see this little triangle right through here that's what we're going to create now we just finished the ribbing and so now it's on to the triangles first thing we want to do is we need to turn our work around so that we're looking at the inside of the hat so our working yarn is right here. We're looking at the inside of our hat. First thing we wanna do is slip the first stitch. And then we're gonna purl one. So bring our yarn forward and then purl one. Then we turn our work. We leave the rest of the stitches unworked. Then we slip one and we knit one just like that. Then we turn our work again and we slip one and we purl two. Then we turn our work and we slip one and we knit two. Now the step-by-step -step instructions are in the pattern. So I'm going to continue working this first triangle and showing you what it looks like. As we slip one, we knit basically to the gap and then one past the gap, then we turn. 
and then we slip back and we are we slip and then we knit back to the end of this grouping of stitches so we're building this triangle slip one purl to the gap and then purl one past the gap and then turn around slip one then knit to the end of that grouping then turn again, slip one, purl to the gap, and then purl one past the gap. Then turn. I'm going to take a look and see. I've got six stitches. Our magic number for this hat is seven. So I'm going to slip one, knit to the end of this group, then turn. So I slip one and now I'm going to purl to the gap. So that's one stitch that I just slipped, then two, three, four, five, six, there's my gap, one past seven. So now this first triangle is finished. I'm gonna show you what it looks on the other. Don't turn at this point, but I'm gonna to turn to show you what it looks like. There's our little triangle. It looks a little messy, but that's okay. Now we're gonna start the next triangle and we'll do this all the way till we get back around to this first triangle right here. I didn't put my beginning of the round marker on. You don't really need it at this time, but if you feel comfortable having it there, go ahead and put that back on. Um, but we're gonna work this until we get back around and where these stitches right here are, where that gap, big gap is, and you'll know when you get there. And we're gonna do that same thing that we just did. We're gonna slip one and purl one. Turn our work. Slip one and knit one. Turn our work. Slip one, purl to the gap. There's my gap, then purl one past. Then turn. Slip one, knit to the end of that set of stitches, and then turn. Slip one, purl to the gap, then purl one past the gap. Then turn. Slip one, knit to the end of this set of stitches, whoops, don't split your yarn. Then turn, slip one, purl to the gap. Then knit one past. And we're gonna continue doing this until we have seven stitches in this grouping. So we have a few more passes to go. Slip one, knit to the end of this group and turn. Slip one, purl to the gap. There's our gap, then purl one, then turn. So I have six stitches. This is gonna be the last one of this triangle. Slip one, knit back, turn, slip, purl to the gap, purl one past the gap, and that's going to give us seven stitches for this group on our right needle. Go back and verify. There's three, six, and seven. So now we need to start the next triangle without turning. We don't turn at this point. Now we're ready to start the next triangle. I'm gonna go ahead and work all the way around till I get back to the first triangle. And then I will show you tier one of Becca's Beanie in the round, Entrelac Knitting. So I've worked all the way around and I just finished the last triangle. 
This is what it looks like on your needles. It's all bunched up. It's hard to see that they're triangles. This is normal. But I wanna show you on the last one, we're gonna slip one and knit back on the last triangle. Now we are ready to start tier one. Now you can kind of see the triangle. See it like that. So now we're ready to start tier one and we need to pick up seven stitches along this edge of our triangle, along the long edge. This is the beginning of the tiers, the tier rounds is right here. And again, I took my stitch marker off because I'm gonna know when I get there because I'm gonna run out of stitches to work. Plus, if you need an extra indicator, you have your tail here. But if you're more comfortable, you can go ahead and place a stitch marker there as well. So I need to pick up seven stitches along this edge. I like to pick up through both of the loops. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm going to go right into here, which is kind of a non-stitch, but to get that seventh one. And that's called a pick up and knit. So I picked up and knit seven stitches. Now I need to work backwards. Now you can either flip your work over. I'll show you that way first. I am um, pulling yarn out of my ball here. Okay. So you turn your work over, and this is what the, the instructions indicate. Plus, there's a diagram with arrows to help keep you on track. But you slip one, and then you purl back. And we're going to purl back six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So there should be seven stitches over here. And then when we turn around, we're gonna work back again. Now this time we're making a rectangle instead of a triangle and we're gonna incorporate the stitches from the new rectangle to the stitches from the triangle to the left. And we'll do that by this. Slip one. And then we're gonna knit five. One, two, three, four, five. And a good way to know is you're one stitch before the gap. There's a gap here. So one stitch before the gap. Then we're going to work what's called an SSK, which is slip, slip. And then I like to say slide because I'm putting my left needle back in and knit through the back loop. Then turn our work over, slip one, and purl back for this group. So there's one two, three, four, five, six, then turn. So I'm going to continue working this rectangle, slip one, knit to one stitch before the gap, and then SSK to knit those two together. Slip, slip, then I like to say slide, knit through the back loop. Then turn your work over, purl, or slip, one, purl back for this group. So I have seven stitches over here. I can see this row right here, and I'm gonna turn. As you go, you'll have a big gap on this side. This is gonna build up this way into a rectangle. So again, that's slip one, knit to one stitch before the gap, and then SSK, slip, slip, knit through the back loop. I'm gonna continue on until I've gotten to the last stitch over here and then I'll show you what that looks like. 
Okay, so our first rectangle is finished. Now we need to pick up seven stitches along this side and repeat the process. So to pick that up, we go through here, and I like to go through both legs of that stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I kind of picked up in this little gappy area right there to get that seventh stitch. As long as you pick up seven stitches evenly across the side of this triangle, you're good. Then we, I'm gonna show you what I call knit backwards or left-handed knitting. You slip the first stitch from right to left then you stick your left needle into the stitch on your right needle and I stick it in and behind. Then I bring the working yarn towards my body and I lift the right needle up and over. So that's uh, backwards knitting or left-handed knitting. But this is how I work that. And I'm gonna go back. Um, I slipped one, then I'm gonna knit backwards for six stitches. So I'm gonna make sure I have seven stitches over here because seven's my magic number for this project. Okay, I do, there's seven stitches over here and then we've got 14 stitches over here. So now we're back to regular knitting, which is slip one, then we're gonna knit five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna do that SSK again. So that's a slip slip, slide, knit through the back loop. Then you can flip your work over or you can continue with the knitting backwards, which is slip and then knit backwards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. On this side of your work, it'll start building that gap. Then we go back again, slip and knit. One, two, three, four, five, and then the SSK. And again, you're more than welcome to flip over and purl back on this next one, or you can knit backwards, whichever works for you. So I'm slipping one, and then I'm purling back or knitting backwards till I get to the side over here. And this will be six stitches. Just like that. Then slip, go back again. I'm gonna continue doing this until I have used up all the stitches in the group to the left. I'll show you what I mean here. We're doing the SSK. Combining those from the triangle over here to the rectangle we're creating. So I'm gonna continue on until I have all those. Then I'll pick up again, and I'll do this all the way around until I get back to the beginning, and then I'll show you how we work tier two. So now I am on the last rectangle of tier one. So I'm gonna show you how we work this and then move into tier two. So I do my SSK, then turn, slip the first stitch, and purl back. We're looking at the wrong side of our work now, or the inside of the beanie. So I finished across the final rectangle. Now you do not turn at this point. Now we need to pick up seven stitches along the side of the rectangle that we just created. Here's the rectangle that we just created. Show you what that looks like on the front. So there's the triangles, tier one. Now we're gonna pick up along this side to start tier two. And tier two is gonna move this way. And I'll show you on the finished beanie here. There's our ribbing, there's our triangle. There's tier one going this way. Now tier two is gonna go this way. Okay, so let me show you how we get started on that. Looking at the wrong side of your work, you are going to pick up in purl 
seven stitches along this edge. So I'm going to go through here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then right through here is the seventh one. And then you turn your work. Then you slip one and knit six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then turn, slip one, purl five. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to purl two together. One from the rectangle we're creating and one from the rec the top of the rectangle next to you. So we just purl two together. Then turn. Slip one, knit to the end of this group. So it's knit six. And then turn. And remember, our magic number is seven. So if you ever get confused, just check and make sure that you have seven stitches in your group. And we do. So then you slip one and you purl to one stitch before the gap or purl uh, five. There we are. There's our gap. We're going to purl those two together and close that up. And then turn. So you see how we're working the top of the stitches from the rectangle here as we are creating the new rectangle. So then slip, knit back. Then I'm also going to show you the knit backwards on tier two. So slip, stick the left needle in the back of the next stitch on the right needle, bring the yarn towards your body and slide it off. This is knitting backwards instead of flipping and purling. Do what works for you, whichever is the most comfortable. I just want to show you both ways. I tend to work this way. Then I slip one, knit back. Slip one and purl back. Purl two together. Then I slip one, knit back. Slip one and purl back. Purl two together. Slip one, knit back, slip one, purl back, and again all the numbers and the step-by-step -step instructions plus diagrams are in the pattern, and the pattern is available at jennyfishknits.com. The pattern and the yarn will be available in a kit or individually, whichever you prefer. And the pattern comes in print or digital. Okay, so I'm going to finish on here. Let's see, we've got two more stitches to incorporate, so I'll do that real quick. Then I'll show you how to move on to the second uh, rectangle of tier two. 
Curl those two together, slip. See, it goes pretty fast. And that's the great thing about these rectangles. Like if you do make a mistake and you need to pull back, you just drop your needles and pull back to where you picked up your stitches. Everything else is still on your needles. So if you do have to frog, you're only frogging like one little section at a time. That makes it nice as well. Okay, this is the last pass to finish up this rectangle. So we're purling back. and purl those two together. Now I want to show you how I pick up and purl by knitting backwards. <laughs> backwards knit. Um, pick up and backwards knit seven stitches. That's, it's easier than saying it. Okay, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sometimes I'll count backwards to make sure I have enough loops that I know where to start. Um, sometimes you can come up with an extra one if you've knit a stitch on the end instead of flipping it. It happens. It doesn't make a difference in the grand scheme of the project. So I'm just popping my needle underneath those two, wrapping the yarn towards my body, and then popping it back up. So I'm capturing this area. I'm capturing the stitch through this area. Okay, so we've got four, five. I need two more. Here it is. six and seven. So now I've got all the stitches on my needle for the next rectangle going this way and I'm going to work these while I incorporate the ones on this side and then I'll have another rectangle going in this direction. I'll go all the way around until I run out of the side triangles like this to pick up or rectangles like this to pick up. Then we go back to tier one and go the opposite direction. So tier one, you're going this way. Tier one, <laughs> you're going this way. Tier two, you're going this way. Tier uh, one, back this way. So you continue reversing, follow the pattern for the amount of times you need to do that. And then I'll show you how we decrease. And I'm just gonna use this example right here because I'm already at a spot where I can show you how to decrease. Whether you're working on tier one or tier two, the decrease idea is the same. So let's say that it's time, we're at the top of the crown, we're up here. We've worked all these. Now it's time to do our decreases so that we can make this wonderful star pattern on the top. Okay, the instructions will say pick up one less. So we're at seven. Now we need to pick up six instead. So what we'll do is we'll go down and I like to skip one in the middle. So I'll pick up three. There's one, two, well, maybe, there we go. <laughs> two three I'll skip a spot and then pick up three more and so now instead of picking up seven on the first decrease tier I've only picked up six then the next time around I'll only there'll be um, spot to pick up six, but I'll only pick up five. Then the next time around, there'll be a spot to pick up five, but I'll only pick up four. You continue doing those decreases until you're down to two stitches that you've picked up on your needle. When you're down to those two stitches, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I'm on the last one. I'm picking up two. This is our last decrease tier. So there's space for three, but I'm only picking up two. Sliding this over. And the great thing about the entrelock in the round is because of all the gaps and everything, I don't have to switch over to double pointed needles. I can continue working on my 16 inch circulars. So slide that over. I'm gonna pull that then slide, then SSK. Then slip, purl, slip, SSK, slip, purl, slip, SSK. And there we go. 
Now I've got two stitches for each of these groups all the way around. Now at this point, you just clip your yarn and slide it all through. So I'll show you what that looks like. Now when you get to the end, you are gonna have very, very little yarn left if you are using the Silo Mountain. Um, so this is a perfect one skein project. It uses up all your yarn. So I'm gonna slide that through, rotate over here. Whoops, get that needle out of the way. And then I'm simply gonna slide my tapestry needle through each of the two stitches and then pull it through. Oops. Go to the next one. Slide it through, slide it through, slide it through. Make sure I don't pull that one out of the... <laughs> Here we go. This is where we need to go. Turn it around. So I'm sliding it through the, the group of two stitches. And sliding it off of my circular needle. Okay, I think this was the last one. There we go. Then cinch it up. I'm going to lay this out flat. So you have that little hole there. Well, it's super easy to close up. You just pull this like a, like a drawstring. Let me get the needles out of the way there. Just pull it like a drawstring. And then I like to go back through. One more time. And then back down through the center. And then I'll leave those in. But that's what the finished hat looks like. There you go. Thank you guys so much for joining me as we knit the Becca's beanie. I had so much fun teaching you guys everything from the cast on to knitting entrelock in the round and working the decreases to make this amazing pattern and this wonderful beanie. Don't forget, you can get the kit that includes the pattern and all the yarn you'll need at JennyFishknits.com. Thanks again, guys. Have a fantastic day and happy knitting.